I've been doing a couple things with specialty bits lately and I thought it might be interesting to do a couple small videos on specialty bits. So today I want to talk about uh, roundover bits and these are bits for putting a roundover on the edge of your work or in pockets to make a nice smooth transition instead of a sharp corner like the one you see in the picture next to me. As you can see it's a pocket and the edge of the pocket is nice and rounded over. It's a quarter inch roundover. And I did that using uh, two different bits that I'll talk about here in a second. So let's take a look at some of the different types of roundover bits that are available. This is one type of roundover bit. They call this a point roundover bit. And this is one of the bits that I use. This one you can see is a half inch in diameter and is a quarter inch deep. And so it makes a quarter inch roundover. This particular bit I bought from RIP Precision Tools and I will go ahead and put a link in the description of this video. This is another bit I've used quite a bit and I really like this bit. This was my first roundover bit before I went to the point roundover. This is called a plunge roundover and this bit works really nice. The only challenge with this bit is you have to learn to adjust for the actual the diameter of this plunge area. So you can't just plunge right on the profile which is what I typically do with the point roundover. Let's chat a little bit about the differences between the two bits. As you can see the point roundover has a very sharp tip and uh, there's hardly any uh, distance there that you have to compensate for. So when I'm setting up the toolpath for this bit, I will set it up right as a profile cut with the tip on the actual vector. That can be modified slightly. This sometimes it requires a little bit of sanding to try and get a little ridge off where the bit that is going to join this bit um, has a little bit of a ridge, but doesn't take much sanding, does a very nice job. It's also only one quarter inch deep, as it says D one quarter up there on the top. So therefore, it's limited to how deep it can go, which isn't a problem, but you need to understand that when you are setting up your toolpath. Let's switch over to the other bit, and you can see that that bit is 0.375 inches deep, and it's a quarter inch in diameter versus a point. So that quarter inch in diameter you have to compensate for when you're setting up your tool pass. So now let's go through and set up a couple tool paths and demonstrate. So let's set up a couple examples here and I'm going to use an example of a two inch in diameter hole and I'm going to go ahead and put one here and I'll put another one here for demonstration purposes or thereabouts close I'm just going to show the difference between the two bits real quickly so the first bit that I want to do is I want to show the point round over for the first bit so the first bit is going to be this vector right here and I'm going to use a profile toolpath and on my profile toolpath Remember I said I set that up for 0.2 inches deep. I'm going to select that bit, one right here, and I hit select. And now I've got that 0.2 inch depth. And I'm going to go right on the actual profile. And I'll use a climb cut at this time. I don't need to do a separate last pass. I don't need to add any tabs. It's only going to take one pass for me to go in. I don't need a ramp, so I'm just going to go ahead and calculate. And I should probably change a name so we know which, the, which one this is. Round. Okay. And so you can actually see the round over. I'm going to go ahead and use a bowl bit to, to uh, clear out in here so you can see the, the results. So let me add a bowl bit. That's going to be a pocket tool path because that's what I'd be doing if I was making uh, actual pockets. Remove this. Let me select my bowl bit. 7 16 inch radius. Select. And I'm going to actually take that down to 
0.5 inches and I'm going to edit I don't like the 0.375 inches it's too aggressive for me so I'm going to edit it to 0.25 inches and notice I didn't do that in the tool setup in case I ever want to go back there um, so now I'm going to say bowl calculate that and now we have our first bit and now I want to set up the other bit which is the vector here I want to go ahead and use a profile toolpath again my cut depth because the depth of the head is 0.375 my cut depth will be 0.375 because that allows me to get a nice flush top I'm going to select my 2052 round over bit hit select I'm going to edit that because the 37.375 is a little aggressive for me so I'm going to edit it by point to point two five and by doing it this way remember uh, it doesn't change it in the actual tool database only for this tool path and you can see that it defaults to on, but if I have on, it doesn't allow me to have any offset. So what I need to do is change it, because remember that quarter inch plunge. And I want it to go right on the edge of this bit, which means the, the, the router plunge section has to be, looking at this, has to be right here on the inside edge. It can't be on top of it, or you're going not going to have the round over in the right spot so in this case I'm going to do an inside cut that's where I'm headed for and I'm going to take it I think I'm going to take it minus 0.25 inches the diameter of the bit no separate last pass I'm not going to add any tabs I'm not going to add any ramps I'm going to call this plunge round so I know which one that is. I'm going to calculate and let me go back to the 2D view. One of the things I like to look at is a wire frame to see what that's going to look like and you can see that that's going to cover the edge out here. So let's hit close and I want to change this bowl bit. I'm going to move it down and I'm going to change it since it's the same 0.5 inches to cover both vectors. Hit calculate. All right, let's run the tool pass and see what they look like. Let me try to move it up and zoom in so you can see it on the video. So the first tool path I'm just going to run is the point round over, which is this one here. Preview. And you can see that round over right there on that edge. And uh, it's no big uh, dip here on the edge if you go too deep what you'll end up is actually having the edge cut into the face and then you'll have to do extra sanding or planing now look at the plunge round over that we did and you can see that has a nice uh, blended round over a lot more uh, material removed and now what we'll do is the bowl bit and we'll see how they finish up And so there you are. There's the two different bits with the two different results. At this time, we're going to go and demonstrate cutting the point round over bit to the point two depth. Important in this evolution is to properly zero your bit. Otherwise, you'll end up with a small ridge at the top of your point round over, which I'll demonstrate later in the uh, video series. So making a good zero off the surface is critical. Now that we've zeroed the bit, we'll move on to running the tool path for cutting the round over with the point round over bit. You'll see it goes pretty quickly, drops down, cuts, and comes out. At this point, we'll now move on to watching the plunge round over. 
versus the point round over go ahead and do its round over cut. You'll see that it, uh, I think I did put a ramp in this one, although it's not necessary. At this time we'll demonstrate using the bowl bit. The bowl bit you see right there installed already. I'm zeroing it and then I'm going to plunge the bowl bit in to make a bowl out of this. Start from the center and work our way out. Now you can see a little bit of a ridge here on the outside edge on this one that will easily be sanded away. And when this bulb uh, bit uh, finishes you'll notice there is no ridge here on the side where the roundover joins. So on the point roundover there was a little ridge where the roundover joined the bowl bit to finish the cut and on the uh, one with uh, the plunge roundover there wasn't. The last thing that I want to demonstrate is the point roundover again but I'm going to use a 0.25 depth and show you what happens if your depth is off. As you can see, it's building a ridge around the edge. Recall when I set the depth for this bit, I set it at 0.2 inches, even though it said its depth was 0.25. Through experimentation, that is why I set the bit depth for what I did. So when I measure that lip that's left after I cut a 0.25, you can see it says 0 0.0425, so I found that 0.2 depth seems to be the right depth. In summary, this video was designed to cover using roundover bits so that you could actually put the roundovers on your projects as you're cutting them and not need to take them to the router or use a trim router to do the final roundover. We covered two types of roundover bits, one called a point roundover with the point tip and the other one called a plunge roundover. One was a quarter inch deep, the other one is 0.375 inches deep. They both do reasonable jobs. In this, uh, in this version, you can see that the point roundover, which is this bit over here, had a little more tear out in a couple spots that will need to be cleaned up. And that could be the result of the material or the feed rates that I can experiment with. I didn't want to deal with them in this video. I wanted to keep the video as short as possible. The uh, plunge roundover, like I said, needs to be at least 0.375 inch deep. We discussed the importance of two things. One is how deep you set the cut depth. The plunge rounder was 0.375 to make a nice uh, flush roundover. The point roundover was 0.2 even though it said it was a 0.25 inch deep to make a nice flush roundover. When we did not use 0.2, we went to 0.25. We've got a ridge in the roundover just like you see here. Overall, both bits do a good job. Uh, the other thing is with the, with the uh, plunge roundover, you have to be careful and do an offset from an either inside cut or outside profile cut due to the uh, diameter of the actual plunge part of the bit. I hope you learned something during this video and we'll be able to take this with you to your next project that you want to do a roundover in. Have a great day, and I appreciate your support. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share, comment, and subscribe if not already subscribed to the channel. Have a terrific day.